Okay guys, quick update real quick. We have added copper to our little experiment. Got some copper leaf on here. So a little bit of copper leaf going on and uh, go along with our uh, gold leaf. We're not gonna touch none of those, so we're just gonna let them sit. We have the CLP, the Ballastol, the Hoppies, and the Milcom. It's a day late on that, but uh, we're adding to it and we'll see what happens. Gun myths, debunking gun myths. Boy, a deep subject. Guys, if you Google gun myths, make sure you put it in quotes so it just gets that phrase. You come up with over 80 something thousand hits. I uh, don't know what you get on the other search engines, but you get a ton of them. And um, so you get how to debunk them, you get um, gun myths that are ridiculous gun myths that movies promote, and all this. Um, so this video here, which is the last in our series of, of general knowledge, um, and next time we're going to start getting back our hands back on the guns, which will be a lot better. But this one here, we're going to look at this from a different approach. We're still going to be debunking gun myths, but I'm going to give you the one element that will help you do all of them. Now, there's one thing I am going to do here. Down in the description, there is a link. There's a link to a free ebook. It's called um, Gun Facts. Gunfacts.info is the link. Most of you probably already know about this, but in case you don't, it's a fantastic and invaluable ebook to help you with debunking a lot of these gun myths and give you general knowledge and, and facts about guns that, that are, sometimes are blown out of proportion that the anti-gunners love to just take and just ram down everybody's throat. But a lot of people that come up to me and say, man, I, man, I know, you know guns don't kill people, people do. And I know that the areas that have uh, less restrictive gun laws have lower crime rates and that people that law-abiding citizens with guns in their hands are not the problems and it's a big deterrent. The more people are armed, it's a big deterrent, but I just don't know how to say it. This book will help you do just that because it covers all of that plus a lot more. It's written by an old boy by the name of Guy Smith. Version 6 is out now. They're working on version 7. He updates it every year, every what, about every two years or so. They're working on it. It'll be out sometime this year, but version 6 is still available. It's free. It's supposed to always be free. You can download it. Uh, if you wanted a bounded copy in a book form, I think for a minimal charge, five, six, seven bucks, something like that, you can send in and they'll send it to you like that, but you can download it for free and, and there you go. And you can print it and distribute it all you want. You can't sell it, but if you wanted to print a bunch of them off to give out at a gun show or something like that, then you're free to do it. He's made it, he's made it very available for you, which is a really good thing. It's a good source. And uh, guys, there's other videos out there. There's tons of videos. Uh, Steve over at Safe Arm Review did a video a couple of years ago that I thought was excellent, um, debunking some popular gun myths. So we're not going to get into that standardized thing. We're going to look at it from one other different angle. As I got to reading a lot of this, I got to thinking, well, you know, the Andy Gunners, I wonder if they got myths of their own. Sure as hell, they do. And boy, some of them are doozies. I read probably for two or three hours. And after I got done and I had to take a shower and de-louse, I got to thinking all of them had one common element. Just about all of them. Maybe not every single one, but just about all of them. All of them were easily blown away with common sense and logic. But they all just about had this one common element. And if you know that common element, you can apply it to everything in life, even stuff they like, and it'll have them reeling, going, whoa, 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 wait a minute. And it completely blows their theories out of water. And I'll tell you what that is here in just a minute. But I want to get in. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to show you all this. Got a Starbucks coffee cup. This was sent to me by Bill. Bill went uh, on the day of the boycott and did some Starbucks shopping, and uh, he sent me this. And I just wanted to show Bill I did get it using it for coffee now and it's excellent so thank you bill mr 45 bullet bill and does anybody know how starbucks did on the 14th if anybody knows where to get that information or knows how they did uh, in comparison to the rest of the rest of the days or of the year uh, you know put that up post a link or comment in let everybody know how that works see if we kind of offset their um that anti-gun groups um proposal to boycott starbucks see if we helped them out by going the opposite direction. But anyway, guys, I want to get into this just a little bit, just for a few minutes. I was reading an op-ed 
by a guy, and I don't remember what his name was. It doesn't really matter. He was an idiot anyway. But uh, I found out that not only do they have their own gun myths, the number one gun myth at the top of just about all of them's list of the anti-gunners where guns don't kill people, people do. To them, that's a myth. To us, we know that to be facts. So those of us that live in Reelsville, we know that's a fact. But this guy actually wrote, guns don't kill people, people do. That's myth number one. Actually, not so much. It's people without guns that rarely kill people, although they do occasionally. It's really people and guns kill people. Okay, now that right there is the telltale sign. And that right there gives you the one element that I was just talking about. People and guns kill people. Let's say that you got to go move a big piece of equipment. You get Jim and Bob have to go move this equipment. Because Jim can't do it by himself. He has to have Bob in order to complete his mission. And Bob can't do it without Jim. Period. So therefore, Jim and Bob have to go do this. Alright? So let's apply this here. While he sit there saying in this people and guns kill people, without guns, people couldn't kill people. That's exactly what he said. Without that, without this right here, this dude over here could not kill anybody and nobody would die. That's literally, I mean, that sounds ludicrous, but that's just what that statement said. He was trying to be intellectual and proper and logical sounding, but he just completely stepped all over himself because they don't have anything left on him or to, to land on. This right here is necessary for this right here or this person over here in order to kill. That's what he wants you to think. Here's the thing that they take out of context here, guys. They try to give this a conscience. This is an inanimate object. This, is a, this particular one right here is a Springfield XD40 subcompact. It is loaded. In the anti-gunner's mind, this right here has a conscience of its own. It right now, it secretly wants to jump up off the desk, go to the front door, run across the street, knock on my neighbor's door. When they open it, shoot them all dead, come back and jump back up on the desk. But it can't do it without this, if you're a lefty, or this if you're a righty. But it secretly wants to do that. That's the niche. They try to take responsibility away from the person that's actually committing the act. The one that is vested in it. The one that has, has planned this out. His desire his emotion, his hatred, okay? They take that responsibility away from him and the consequences away from him and throw it severely and strictly on an inanimate object. That's their niche. That's what they try to do. And if they can get enough people on an emotional state to so say, see, if that gun didn't exist, your son would still be alive. That's where they try to run at. And so they try to blame it on this instead of this or this. That's where they get. That's where they. Uh, that's where they lose all credibility. And you can apply that to anything they want. I actually read something somewhere, where and I, I want to say it was Nancy Pelosi because it sure as hell sounds something Dean Batty that she would say. But I don't know for fact, so I'm not putting a name to it, uh, an official name to it. But I read it somewhere, where somebody had actually said that as soon as you pick up a gun or as soon as you touch a gun, everybody has a secret desire to want to kill. And some people just can't control that. So we need to take the guns away. So, I'm touching this gun. Right now, I have a secret desire to want to go shoot somebody. Well, guys, we know that that's a bunch of bunk. I mean, good Lord Almighty. We know that's a bunch of freaking bunk. Let's apply that to everything else. What's a seatbelt in the car for? Seatbelt is to protect you in case you have a wreck. All right? So, according, let's use that type of logic. According to them, as soon as you sit down in a car and put a seatbelt on, you secretly want to go have a wreck because you think you'll be protected. If you didn't put the seatbelt on, you wouldn't even think about having a wreck. So why the hell are we wearing seatbelts? See how stupid that sounds? But that's exactly the logic they put toward this, and that's why they don't have a leg to stand on. This guy said something else, too. He said, um, where they were talking about uh, what they think is a myth, if you ban all guns, you'll only take guns out of law-abiding citizens, criminals will still be able to get theirs. He thinks that's a myth, too. And here's his reasoning for it, guys. He said, and uh, not, it's not an exact quote, it's paraphrasing, but he said, 
it's not as easy to get a gun off the street as people think. You have to have contacts and you have to have a connection with criminal elements in order to know where to find those guns. It's a lot harder to go out on the street and find a gun. Well, what are we talking about here, guys? Criminals, right? Law-abiding citizens will be the only ones that can't get the guns. The criminals, they already, wouldn't you think, because they're criminals, they already have a criminal connection? You know, they have drug connections. They know all about it. They know where to go to get them. They're going to have their connections to get the guns. So that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard again. You can't make this stuff up, guys. By his own statement, he completely threw his entire myth out of the water. But he tries to make it and bring it home and sell it like, nope, 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 you have to have a connection to get them. It's not easy to get them. But he turns right around and says, but his statement says criminals are the only ones that would have guns. No, 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 you, you've got to have a criminal connection. Serious, guys, you can't make it up. So, the one thing that I wanted to get across to you here is this. They try to give an inanimate object a conscience. They try to take all the consequences and all the responsibility away from the man or the human or the woman or whatever that committed the crime and place it solely on this. Would there still be murders without guns? Yes. Why are guns used so much in, in homicide, so to speak? Well, it's a very effective method. We, we will concede that. But they also like to go in on this 68% of all homicides are, are committed with guns. Guys, it's been 68% since the 1990s. It was 68 or close to it, give or take a little bit in either direction, in 1992, in 1997, in 2004, and in 2010. That percentage has never changed, although the number of homicides, overall homicides, and the number of violent crimes has dropped. But that percentage has stayed the same. Why? It's still the most effective way possible. But all the homicides and crime overall has dropped. Well, let's look into that 68%. What does that 68% have? Well, of that 68%, over 70% of them were crime-related homicides. Criminals killing other criminals. Gang shootings. Drug, back, drug bust and, and drug deals gone bad. They make it out sound like it was everyday average Mr. and Mrs. America walking down the street that get murdered. That's not the case. Most of them are done by criminals shooting other criminals. But that's how they twist the numbers in order to try to sell their point home. All right. A lot of that information is covered in gun facts. And they give the sources for those. And uh, so that's, a, that's another reason to have that book. But anyway, guys, I just want to get on out of here as it's getting a little bit long. But that's it, basically, guys. Remember that one thing. They try to give an inanimate object a conscience. Apply it to any other thing in life. Okay? Well, you know, uh, if that spoon didn't exist, Rosie O'Donnell wouldn't be a pig. You know? Really? So let's just take all the damn spoons and forks away and she'll get skinny like everybody else, right? <laughs> Come on, guys. Use some common sense. But that's their logic behind it. That's it on this series, guys. Like I said, next time we're going to get into the guns. And we're going to get into doing a disassembly on a Walter PPK. Now, the Walter PPK that I have was actually the first video that I ever did. And um, we're going to redo that a little bit. But we're going to do a disassembly on it. And there's a good little story behind, that, behind the Walter that I have. And uh, we'll go from there. Now, Wednesday night, we'll get an update on our, um, on our little experiment. We'll look at them for the first time and see where everything's at. And we'll see where we're going from there. That's all I got for now, guys. So hang in there. Be good. And later.